Hello, today we're going to be talking about wedges and their application and their relationship to uh, dry friction. So a wedge is a, a thin wedge-shaped object, hence the name, uh, that's forced between two bodies or uh, a body and kind of, kind of an immovable object and it's designed to separate those two bodies. Um, so here's an example of a wedge. Uh, we've got a wedge that's driven into a log uh, and we're going to split the log by pushing this piece, wedge-shaped piece of metal in between the two. Uh, so uh, for that we're going to need the pushing force. In this case we'd hit it with a hammer to drive that wedge in there um, and it's going to go ahead and cause large normal forces. So there's going to be very large normal forces pushing outwards on the two pieces of this log uh, and that's kind of the desired effect. Um, the big thing that's fighting all of this is going to be the friction forces. So we've got two friction forces pushing up on this wedge. Um, <clears throat> they're going to be very uh, crucial to analyzing this whole problem. Um, so analyzing wedges, what do we do? Uh, well, the first thing is we're going to draw a free body diagram of the wedge and or the body being moved by the wedge uh, as a starting point. So uh, for the free body diagram, we need to remember to include uh, the force that's pushing the wedge in between those two objects. We need to remember uh, the normal forces, so this is the objective of the wedge is to press two objects apart. We need to remember that. Uh, and we need to remember the friction forces uh, that are opposing us pushing this wedge between the two objects. So we need to, after we do that, we write out the equilibrium equations. Um, <clears throat> we assume the wedge and the bodies being moved by the wedge are moving fairly slowly uh, and there's no acceleration, so we're assuming that they're in equilibrium. That lets us write the sum of forces in the x equals zero, sum of forces in the y equals zero, uh, and if we need to, sum of moments. Um, <clears throat> another important equation for all of this, we need to remember uh, the coefficients of friction uh, as they relate the normal forces to the corresponding friction forces. So if we've got one friction force, if we're just starting to put the wedge in there, um, it's going to be the static coefficient of friction that's relating those two, and if we've got the these wedge is actually sliding in, uh, then it's going to be the kinetic coefficient of friction that's actually uh, relating the normal force and the corresponding friction force at each contact point. Um, so <clears throat> here's an example of how we might use a wedge. Uh, say we've got a safe pressed up against the wall, uh, we, we've got a wedge uh, and we're going to press this wedge in there and it's going to separate our body, it's going to move the safe out just enough that we can get our fingers behind it to move it. Um, so <clears throat> to analyze this whole system, uh, first thing we would do is, again, we're going to draw those free body diagrams. So <clears throat> here's our wedge, uh, we've got the pushing force pushing down on the top of this. Uh, and at the two points of contact, I've drawn them here, uh, we've got the <clears throat> normal force from the wall and the normal force from the safe itself. Uh, so if my wedge is at a slight angle, this normal force is going to be perpendicular to that surface. Uh, at each of those points of contact, we've also got those friction forces. Uh, so we can do the same thing for our safe. We've got equal and opposite forces here. Uh, so this is the force, normal force and the friction force of the wedge on my safe. Uh, I've got the weight of the safe that's pretty significant, uh, and I've got a normal force and a friction force down at the base of the safe. Uh, so each one of these uh, is going to give me a body to analyze, and I can write out the free body or write out the equilibrium equations uh, using these diagrams. So to simplify this though, first we're going to look at the friction forces uh, and relating the normal force. So I've got a normal force and a friction force. Uh, they kind of come in pairs. Uh, if I know the coefficients of friction, um, so maybe I know the mass, the angle of the wedge, coefficient of friction between these surfaces, if I know that, I can replace some of these variables. Uh, and so what that's going to look like, uh, before I said um, <clears throat> the coefficient of friction here between the wall and the wedge is 0.1. So 0.1 times Fn is that friction force between the safe and the wall, or sorry, the safe and the wedge, it's 0 0.05. Uh, so we've got the 0 0.05 times Fn3, same thing here. I'm relating all of these friction forces to my actual normal forces. Uh, and I've also got a friction force down here at the base. So what I've done, I've gotten rid of all those. Now I've got two bodies, uh, and I've got three unknowns, really. I don't know the normal force between the wall and the wedge. I don't know the, friction, the normal force and the friction force between the wedge and the safe, and I don't know 
the normal force down here at the base of the safe itself. Uh, so once I have all of that, um, <clears throat> all of this together, I can write out my equilibrium equations. So that's going to give me, in this case, sum of forces in the x and sum of forces in the y is going to be sufficient to solve this particular problem. So with that, that's all you really need to know to analyze wedges. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.